Today I'm joined with Gideon from Nika Education and Careers. Welcome Gideon. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. Good. Um, maybe before we get started, we'd love to hear a little bit about Nika. Um, tell, us, yeah, tell us a little bit about the organisation. Okay, so Nika Education and Careers is sort of two businesses. It's an RTO and a GTO. Okay. An RTO you're probably more familiar with. It's a training registered training yeah. organisation stands for. So a little bit like a little TAFE. Mm -hmm. uh, where we train trades and what, what we train is only electricians, electrical apprentices. So that's the RTO side. Okay, the GTO cool. side is the bit that's less well understood. It's GTO's group training organisation, okay. which means we employ the apprentices while they're being trained. Right, okay. So we've got about 350 apprentices that are our employees. Yep. They're being trained through the school that we run but we host them at large electrical contracting firms okay. or large and medium-sized electric contracting firms. Yeah. So they, they work for them, but we're their employer. Yeah, so I, I guess a big part of your role then and I guess a big part of the organisation organization's role is those relationships with industries to kind of, with the industry it's to enable that. We're embedded in it. We're owned yeah. by the industry. Oh, okay. Um, our directors are from industry yeah. and all of our clients are industry. So oh, cool. we're, we're in inseparable for the industry that we're working in. Cool, and I know obviously you've had, uh, you've been in the education market for a while now and you've had a few different roles. What's it like kind of working in an organisation um, like Nika that's a bit more unique and probably different to roles you've had in the past before? So the immediate comparison is where I've worked in TAFE, yep. which again, as I said, does very similar roles, but where TAFE will do 300 different courses plus, yep. we do two. So we do a certificate two, which is a pre-apprenticeship and an apprenticeship in electrical trades. That's all we do. All of our teachers are electricians. That's what we specialise in. So in terms of previous role in education, just super specialised yeah. and being a GTO. Before this though, I had heaps of corporate roles. So yeah, true. this is very different yeah. to a corporate role. It's a smaller organisation. We don't wear suits. We all wear these logos yeah. and everything. So far more relaxed and I think just you're so much closer to your product, I hate calling it a product, but yeah, of course. to the, the people that you're educating. Yeah. So that's probably the key. It's a, it's I mean, that's kind of similar to us um, in the sense of student garden and sort of social garden. Really, we specialise in property and education versus you know, a lot of the agencies we compete with specialise yeah. in a broad range of industries. And I've always thought kind of deep and dominant is like you're better off being very strong at one or two things rather than trying to be um, good or <laughs> yeah, yeah, good enough yeah. a wide range of things yeah. so it's, it makes a lot of sense and it's no surprise that you guys are um, obviously the market leader given kind of um, yeah the focus on, mm. on those two um, those two courses. And I reckon the, the other thing that's different to where I worked before and I'll, I'll go more to the corporates and mm. given you're a marketing dude and I yeah. grew up to be a marketing <laughs> yeah. dude a lot older than you are as a marketer in previous roles, a lot of my time was spent trying to convince someone what the organisation is, yeah. you know, yeah. what they do and how they do it. And it's usually they wanted us to do that because they weren't being what they said they were going to be or they believed that people didn't believe that they were doing what they were going to do. Nika Education Career's completely flip side for right. me as a marketer is this is an organisation that's so aligned to its purpose and it just it's being what everyone wants it to be. Mm -hmm. The challenge as a marketer is to how do you expose that brand publicly without diminishing the fact that it's already being what it's meant to be. Yeah, yeah, right. And really sort of, so there's a almost a letting people into the secret, letting people into the story, rather than telling them something you just want them to believe, yeah. believe, 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 please. Yeah, and I guess it's obviously a big advantage having that and like being, as you say, so embedded with the industry, it kind of obviously from a brand positioning, the story kind of tells it's itself. Sort of, it's a half told, bit, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And and so I know, um, I think it was last year, um, you guys were working with the Victorian Chamber of Commerce around sort of data and automation. And um, I'd love to hear how are you guys using data and automation, um, for, like from a student learning point of view, and also like from the teacher's perspective as well. How are you guys embracing embracing that? So, so where it came up was um, Vic Chamber interviewed me and was asking me about the trends within the industry. Yeah. So the data and auto automation thing were examples of where previously electricians were being trained to put wires and things and put switches on them and, and yeah. I won't go any further because I'll demonstrate how little I know <laughs> yeah. about being an electrician. But it's getting more complex and more interesting now because instead of the wires just having electrons in them, there's data flowing through them yeah. too. 
people are expecting more and more now that in their home, the light or the button they press or the app they use isn't just going to turn something on, it's going to make something move. So automation yep. comes into that. I think it's those sorts of things impact our teaching in terms of what we need to teach. Mm -hmm. I reckon the, the, the hot topic at the moment, obviously artificial intelligence course, for us, yeah. is there's a different impact on us because mm -hmm. it, it's less around how we're teaching. Well, it's, there's a bit of it and less mm -hmm. around what we're teaching. But And the perfect example this morning, I was chatting to someone who's in a sort of similar industry yeah. and I was talking about a, a course for electricians that might be you know, a second level running your business course or something mm. like that. And he said, don't go and buy it. Just go into chat GPT now, type, give me the course, and you get it for free. Yeah. And so I think what as trainers, training organisations are going to do now is getting the content is easy, yeah. delivering it in a way that people, that it's credible and it's relevant yeah. is the hard bit. And that's, that's our focus with the, as technology evolves around how people are taught yeah, and I love the fact that you guys are you're embracing that in terms of like obviously it's changing the way people engage with learning. It's changing the way people learn, right? And it's changing the way, as you say, changing the way people teach. And it's like it's here to stay. So we might yeah. as well embrace it and think about how we can use it as a um, tool to gain an advantage and kind of deliver a better ex better learning experience yeah. to students. Yeah. Cool. So I'd love to hear a little bit about um, you know what's on the horizon for Nika. Um, when you guys look into the future, what are you guys focused on delivering over over the years to come? So I think there's there's, there's an immediate need and there's a longer term need. So the, the longer term need is we know to get to net zero, we have to electrify most things, yep. and that's houses, buildings, lots and lots of you know cars, so on. In order to electrify most things, at some point in time, you're going to need to have an electrician. Yep. Otherwise, people kill themselves. Really, was what you need yeah. a great electrician. Correct. So that's the long-term thing. The short-term thing is we know that within Victoria, at the, there is a shortage of about two thousand six hundred electricians needed by twenty twenty-six. Mm -hmm. That's because about half of that number is those retiring, and half of that number is just to meet the demand. Yeah, right. We've got fifteen hundred enrolled at the moment, and we're one of the bigger providers mm -hmm. of it. So for us, it's about not only how do we expand our own capacity, but how can we help the rest of the system, mm -hmm. so including TAFE, pump out some really high quality electricians who start and finish, so apprentices who start and finish their course mm -hmm. to feed the appetite for electrification of everything. I guess, are you working closely with the government around trying to meet the demands of that? I guess there's a balance between um, the demands of those the, the, um, the government projects as yeah. well as kind of private enterprise and... Um, you know, just like your average electrician in your house. So how do you guys balance that? How is that kind of changing? And, and what, yeah, I guess, how do you guys think about that when you're thinking about placements for your students? It's a good question. So GTO, where I started. So GTO, I think, in the way I describe it, is probably one of the best kept secrets ever as to what the benefit of a GTO. Um, and partly that comes into the protection that we offer the apprentice. So if an apprentice goes into a job, they're employed by us, yep. they're in an unsafe environment or the organisation goes bust or the project gets cancelled, they come back to us and we uh, find them okay. the next gig. Right. So it's, it's really well kept secret. Large business and government get it, they understand. So most of our apprentices right now are in that market. We dearly love smaller and medium sized businesses to, do, to use what we do because mm -hmm. there's two things that will come out of it. Firstly is... We're far more effective at getting women to become electricians hmm. because we have the ability to say, if you're feeling unsafe ever, walk off the site, ring us, yep. we'll move you to another site. Yeah, you don't have to worry right, about okay. your employment and we've got mentors around you. One last, I'd love to hear some other examples of like, what, where do you find, like what other industries okay. have GTOs? In order to meet the demand that we have for electrical apprentices, we have to go to half the population of women. Yep. Now, we can get more women into it, and that's what we're focusing on, and that's the, the, the critical role we can play. The other part that we play is being a specialist trainer. Uh, the ratio of students who start with us and finish with us is much, much higher than anyone else. Right. Because we specialise and we just do that. Yeah, so yeah. it's, no, in, in terms of oh, okay. other trainers of uh, electricians, okay. right. we have about 80 to 90% completion rate. Right. So not only can a GTO model, GTO, RTO model like us, attract more people into it, so more commencements, more of them will finish, yeah. which means we're more likely to solve for the 2,600 gap in electricians yeah. 
going forward. Yeah, cool. Well, I've really appreciated you coming and having a conversation with today. I've certainly enjoyed learning about what a GTO is and learning more about um, what Nika's up to. And yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you for having Good me. Here. It's a pleasure. Cheers.